Hi y'all, my name's Abby. I'm one of the conference ambassadors on campus over the summer. My name's Lana, I'm also a conference ambassador this summer. So we will be giving you guys a tour of Gibson Hall. This is the only female, uh, this is one of the three female doors on campus. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started, but before we do, I want to introduce our lovely cameraman. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name's Henry. Does it look good? All right. Yeah. Um, my name's Henry, and I'm going to be the cameraman for today. I'll be monitoring the chat, so uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be sure to ask Abby and Lana about them. Um, and also let us know where you're tuning in from, like City and State. So Abby, Lana, what's up first? Cool. So before we get started, um, if you have any questions again, let Henry know. Um, um, but we'll get started here and this is the front desk of Gibson. You'll see this as soon as you walk into the dorm. Um, we will have a hall admin here or we will have a RA staffed here, which is one of our resident assistants. Um, you can come check out any ping pong table, pool table, anything like that. Just kidding, there are, is nothing like that here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you can but check just, out the cooking equipment Just here. other equipment here yeah, in cooking, general. Any cooking equipment, board games, anything like that, you can come check out here. If you have any questions, you can also come down to the front desk and they will be here to help you out. Gotcha. Um, but that pretty much covers the front desk. Any, if you need a vacuum or a broom or anything like that for your room, you can come to the front desk and check that out. All you need is your student ID, you hand it to them and they'll trade you out for whatever you need. Gotcha. Um, mailboxes. Mm -hmm. Mailboxes, so you will get letters here. Um, any cards, some Amazon packages might fit in here, mm -hmm. but everything else you will pick, any big packages will be picked up at Gregson. Um, and then these lockers, your combination and your locker number will be available on your housing portal. You can log in, find that, and check this weekly if you want to to see if you have any letters. Gotcha. Over here we have our laundry room. So there are three washers and four dryers. There is a vending machine two vending machines and an ice maker. Right now our vending machines are empty because we are in the process of switching from Pepsi to Coke. So hopefully by the time you guys start arriving, those vending machines will be full and those will be available to you. Um, there are a very limited amount of vending machines. So when you're doing laundry, make sure to please um, keep an eye on your laundry. And there will also be a new laundry system put in place mm -hmm. in the fall where you will be using the app called Speed Queen. And so you will have two washes and two dry, two dries per week. So once you get on campus, just keep a lookout for that to see um, how that works and what you need to do for that. Gotcha. And if you go over, it's only about a dollar and fifty charge for every additional wash and dry. Gotcha. All right. What's up next? Next, I'm gonna take you guys to the kitchen area. Mm -hmm. So what are y'all studying? What's y'all's majors? Uh, right now, I'm a communication major with my minor in theater. Mm -hmm. What about you, Abby? Um, I'm an international global studies major with a Ooh. minor in Spanish. We love international <laughs> studies. That is That was what my major I'm was. The class it's the, it's uh -huh. the cool kids major. Mm -hmm. it, is the, it is the cool kids major. Everyone it's should major cool in international studies. It's the cool arts kid major. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I'm calm, so I'm in the studies. <laughs> All right, so now we're on the second floor. All right, this is going to be your kitchen slash lounge space. So anytime you guys want to cook meals or like bake cookies, things like that, you'll come up and do that. I know last year we actually had someone like bake like a lot of cookies and we came up and played card games. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your RA events are actually going to be held here. Um, one that we did last year was like waffles during the study sessions, which was, it was nice. We had like a bunch of waffles. Uh, this space is great for reading as well and then of course the communal fridge mm -hmm. anything that you want make sure you put your name on it because first come first serve the not yeah definitely definitely have it labeled because then it's going to be communal food mm -hmm. but yeah this is the communal space a lot of the times when we kids up here me and my friends pretty much watch tv up here we play video games up here mm -hmm. things like that all year so mm -hmm. this is kind of be like where you'll see most of the kids here gotcha and what's outside here can you tell us more about like where gibson hall is at all right so gibson hall is located in central campus so right in front of us actually is, you can see through the blinds, that's going to be 1021, one of the dining halls, as well as Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So you guys are located directly across the street from the Starbucks, which is a temptation for first year students. Uh -huh. And then right next to that is going to be um, the Founders Food Hall, so that has things like Slim's Chicken, Gustavo, and mm -hmm. uh, just Green Table, things like that. As well as 1021 should now be ushering into dine dinner hours, I do believe. So yeah. that's something that's coming, and they're doing a new addition on this, the side of it. Awesome. So very convenient location. Yes, it's great. Like especially if you do morning classes, like, I used to run up and grab a bagel all the time. So mm -hmm. like here last year. Yeah. All right. What's up next? Next, I'm going to take you guys to the rooms. Mm -hmm. And bathrooms. Yes. Yeah. So I know um, both of you are going to be RAs this upcoming semester. Can you explain a little bit what RAs are? I'll let 
I have to explain that one. She's the one you're kidding. So an RA. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, each floor has at least one residential assistant. Mm-hmm. Um, as you can see in Gibson, this is one of the RA rooms that says residential assistant. A lot of the rooms will say that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they basically live on your hallway. They will mm-hmm. be in charge of working on your roommate agreements. They will be making um, the dorm a very fun, community-friendly building. Any, um, when you move in, you'll see some like something like this. Um, on your door, we call mm-hmm. them door decks, yes. and mm-hmm. they will work on bulletin boards throughout the whole year. They will host programs, um, but they are kind of the ones that supervise residents. We don't really are in mm-hmm. charge of you. We're not like watching you all the time, but we're just here to make sure that you guys are staying safe, mm-hmm. making sure that residents are following any safety protocols that we have, and just overall trying to make your freshman experience as fun as possible and make sure that you guys are just not burning stuff and burning stuff. Yeah, a good, good resource to use. <laughs> yes, and I will be in Holcomb, so mm-hmm. if y'all ever need anything, I'll be over there. I will definitely be in Maple West. Mm-hmm. All right, so this is the bathroom. Yes, El Vario. Um, mm-hmm. These are the bathrooms. Most bathrooms have about three, uh, three, three toilets. toilets, two showers. The only bathroom that's a little bit different is the one that's in the middle um, on the first floor, and that's just because it has like two showers and like one toilet in the middle. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, this is your setup. Uh, bathrooms, there's no rules about to like when to come in and out. The only difference, uh, the only thing about bathrooms is you can't put like personal trash into here. Mm-hmm. And then if you're in here like after a certain amount of time, you may hear a knock on the door that's like already on duty. There's making sure that there's no one hurt or injured in the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And because this is a female uh, uh, residence hall, so only um, only uh, female residents in this uh, in the storm can use the bathrooms? Yes, for the most part. If there's ever any male guests, what will happen is most of the time there'll be some, like a woman in front of the door being like, hey, just so you know, there's a guy in like stall one or two or three. That's mm-hmm. how it worked last year. And it was a very like well put system because make sure that no girl had to walk in on a guy and vice versa. Gotcha. All right. So now I believe we're going to go see a room. Yeah. So another thing to add on to these bathrooms. So these bathrooms are cleaned um, Monday through Friday. So Saturday and Sunday, our ISA staff does not work. So the bathrooms may get a little bit icky, but they are clean first thing Monday mm-hmm. morning. Um, once the year rolls around, there'll be a little sign posted outside the bathroom that will have the cleaning schedule hours. And you can see what time the ISA team will be here and you can plan your showers according to that time. And the ISA team here is absolutely great. They're genuinely some of the mm-hmm. sweetest people. They are amazing and please treat them nicely because they yes. are they help keep the, the halls clean and they're just perfect. Yeah. So now we're going to look at what everyone's been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Your room. Yeah, and be sure you all to let us uh, ask us any questions you have about Gibson, about the room, and anything in, in general. Yeah, so this is a typical layout in, of a double style room of Gibson. You have your two beds, two desks, and nightstand. You both will have a um, walk in closet kind of deal, mm-hmm. and then you have this built in chest that you can divide the doors with your roommate, mm-hmm. and then each bathroom and or each room in Gibson has a bathroom that is available for you guys. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're you know, saying that sometimes corner rooms are like a little bit bigger, but for the most part, these are your standard rooms. Mm-hmm. And all the furniture will be the same, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. All the furniture might have stacked, like the drawer is really movable as well. So like mm-hmm. as people like use their drawers to kind of make like a divide, as people put their drawers under their beds. Mm-hmm. As well as for the beds themselves, as you guys can see that they're a little bit higher than normal, I guess. But for the most part, if you guys like, I don't exactly like where the bed is on um, these notches, you can put in a maintenance request or do it yourself to have them um, raise the bed. Mm-hmm. So you put it up to here, which I believe last time we said was about 36 inches high. Mm-hmm. And then you can also add another bed post if you just feel like that's not high enough for you. Mm-hmm. And this one actually has a really cool view of Founders. And Ducks. right next to Founders is a building called Kemple. So for any of you like Fulbright majors and things like communication, mm-hmm. um, like theater, things like that, but most of your classes will be held in Kimball. The gotcha. business building is also down yes. there. Well. Yeah. So for and any business students, congratulations. Yeah. You have three minutes away mm-hmm. from the business building. Yeah. And it's not too far from Harlem Park and Garage, which is yeah. nice. It seems like it's just the perfect location. Yeah, the, honestly, the Greek theater is also right next to us. The so. Greek theater is so great. Cause, like when they put on concerts, like you don't even have to like, leave your room if you want to hear them sometimes. They're not mm-hmm. like, too loud, but they're like, yeah, you got I personally love studying at the Greek theater once it gets a little mm-hmm. bit cooler because I hate the hot, I can't stand it. 
Mm -hmm. um, I will be out there in the Greek theater as an RA anytime my residents are like, I just need to get out, I need to just get out of the room, I will take them down to the Greek theater. Um, this past year I took two residents and we were doing carpools in the lawn. So it's really fun, I would definitely suggest to go out there, um, bring your friends, get some coffee at night, mm -hmm. and, you know, coffee, but like something you can Oh, and sometimes you, know. you need coffee and I if you're we, studying for, for the midterms. Sure, like me and my group of friends, we started off stargazing, so we bought like a bunch of like our blankets and stuff and stargaze. But then it kind of turned into so just kind of dancing in the dark. Like, <laughs> you know, it, was, it was amazing. I mm. love the Greek theater so much. It's like if you're a reader, um, one of the spaces, like I said, there was that ledge in the kitchen, but also like the Greek theater is a great place to like have a mini picnic, put in your headphones, and just read. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Perfect, perfect location. Got access What's to everything. What's your favorite book, Henry? Tell us. My favorite book? Um, putting me on the spot here. Yes. I would say it's going to be nerdy, but Ender's Shadow. Um, it's a, do you all know what Ender's Game is? No. Okay, well, it's a, sci it's a science fiction book, and it's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, that's it. Do you all have favorite books? Put me, put me on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, it, I'm such an avid reader. I think, like, series-wise, it's, it's a little challenge, but, like, my favorite book series is a series called Vampire Academy, for sure. I've been reading those books since I was, like, 12. Mm -hmm. Standalone books. It's a little sad for anyone who's ever read the book, but there's a book that's called Speak. It's super sad, but, like, I love it. It's mm -hmm. my favorite book. Abby, favorite book? I've got two book series, <laughs> and one of them is so basic. That's why I threw in another one, because everyone's going to be like, oh, I read that. But um, I was a hardcore Percy Jackson uh, book reader. Let me mm -hmm. tell you, my parents bought me the whole book series for my birthday. Mm -hmm. I've read them all like twice, three times through. So that that is my book. And then um, Red Queen, the Red Queen series, is also yeah. another big favorite of mine. But gotcha. I used to be a big big book nerd or big book worm in high school and junior high. I'm trying to get back into it. So mm -hmm. hopefully, slowly and slowly, I can so start getting into it. Gotcha. Honestly, yeah. Well, um, speaking of reading, I'm going to read off some questions for you. Oh, how about, how, I was thinking about that and I was like, either going to like that or going to hate it. Okay, so, we, yeah, so we got some questions. First one, what room number are we in? I think 349. Mm -hmm. And all the rooms, um, most, most of the rooms are going to be formatted similarly. Some of them may be a little bit bigger, like Lana said, um, but same furniture, same layout. Side room, I think the end rooms have a little bit of difference to them, mm -hmm. but yeah, those are the fortunately rooms. we have a camp going on right now, so we can't get Yeah. Yeah, I, could, I live in four rooms, so I can tell you it's the same furniture. You just, like, for the one on the first floor, simply you're going to have more windows, and it's not a little bit wider, mm -hmm. but it's the same furniture. Next question, what are the measurements of the desk? And here we go. Okay. All right, I'm just going to start from the actual desk spot and not from these are drawers. Yeah. I'm going to start mm -hmm. with the desk. I got you. Thank you. Teamwork. All right, that's about two feet, eight inches. Two feet, eight inches long, and then could you also do the width as well? I like measuring things. Okay. It's about two feet. Two feet wide, and then let's get the height. Alright, that's two feet five inches. Two feet five inches tall. Next question. The housing website lists dimensions for a wardrobe. What is that? I assume it's just um, this closet here. A lot of the of the um, uh, residence halls, they have wardrobes or armoires that are movable, but I assume they're talking about this. But we can get the dimensions for, uh, yeah, for this wardrobe. Let's see. Yeah. And, and this right here, I guess we call the dresser, maybe? Yeah. yeah. We got the list. Mm -hmm. This might be the... This might... This might be the wardrobe. Oh, really? Be yeah. Because, so this is supposed to be 22 inches by 54 mm -hmm. by 80. So... You want to check and see if it's 80? Yeah. Go, go yeah, ahead okay. and verify. Here you go. And we're in the process of updating our, um, our measurements on our website. So um, be sure uh, and uh, be on the lookout for that. Six foot something. No, that's, it's not six foot. I mean, I'm I'm six two and it's five five. Five five. That makes sense. I'm not five three. Yeah. All right. Next question. Um, can we see two four oh eight or three four eight? Do those rooms have three double windows? So we can only go in this room because we have a camp going on. Um, this is one that we know is not occupied. But Lana, do you happen to know? Uh, what rooms those? Two four eight and three four eight. Two four eight. So they'd be right next to us. Um, so those would be one of the corner rooms, so like right now, so it's like about the same size as this. Room. They do have three three windows in them, I think. Yeah, right? three double windows, Some maybe. Corners. 
Some of the corners, I know the corner ones do have multiple windows. I'm not sure about the ones on the side. Sure, no, that makes mm -hmm. sense. Gotcha. Can we see inside the closets? Of course. So, this is what the closet looks like. And feel free to let us know if you're looking for, for anything else. Okay, next question. Also, y'all, we're going to be uploading this onto our YouTube page, so uh, just be on the lookout for that. Can you show us the wall with the windows? Do they go across the whole wall? Nope. Nope. So, this is the wall with the window, so about um, two-thirds, half of that wall. Um, is made up by the window. Can you uh, can you show inside the closet? We just did that. I would feel free if uh, y'all need to look inside. Uh, let me know again. Can you give measurement of the wall space next to the window? All right. Uh, you want to do it? Okay. Okay. While he's taking those measurements, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in a week here for oh, all the yes. coming yes, students. Oh yes, yes, please. Uh, so a week are sometimes known as welcome week. Is going to be that first week right before class, and then you guys all are going to arrive on campus. Mm -hmm. Basically, you guys, there's going to be like a bunch of events held that's just really meant to help students feel welcomed on campus. Some of those include touring, like what buildings will be made like for your major. So for mine, I'm in the Fulbright College, mm -hmm. so we got to see Kemple. We went to Old Main. We went to a couple of other buildings. I don't know it differs for your major, things like that. Also, the dorms hold a lot. I can say for a fact that Gibson has one of the best communities since it is an all-girls floor mm -hmm. uh, dorm. I know my, my first week here, literally all the girls had their doors open and like it was so cool. You could just walk into someone's mm -hmm. room and just watch movies and things like that. So that was a great experience. Like I said, there's a lot of baking, sometimes watching TVs. It sounds a little cliche, but like it's a, mm -hmm. it's a great dorm and a great sense of community. And Gibson especially has like like almost a hundred students. Yes, uh, there's ninety eight uh, students. On yeah, the so, it's like so it's one of those smaller dorms, which I feel like is but makes it easy to have a tight knit community because everyone knows each other. Yeah, like I can't tell you how many times like I lived on the first one, I would just come up to the third floor and hang out with friends. Gotcha. Uh, do you have those measurements for us? Yeah. Abby? So the length from here to that wall is four feet and one inch. Four feet. And one then inch. from the floor to the ceiling, it is nine feet eleven inches. 9 feet 11 inches. Awesome. Thank you. Next question. What are the dimensions of the nightstands? So, let's see if it's these. Oh, I'll pull one out so you can kind of see it. Yeah. <laughs> Watch your fingers. All right. So it is two feet long. Two feet long. A foot and a half wide. <laughs> a foot and a half wide. We got some creaky, <laughs> creaky stairs. <laughs> creaky, creaky floor. It's character. Mm -hmm. Two feet and six inches tall. Tall. Awesome. Thank There's you. There's a lock here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the great things about this dorm. Like, I feel like I have like a really valuable necklace, like family mm -hmm. heirloom that you don't want to part with. You can always just put a lock on your. Yeah. Necklace. Also, another storage space we didn't show off is is up here because oh, there's yeah. technically this. So if you're if you have a step stool um, or you just happen to be really tall, then you can store some stuff up there. Yeah, like you can store like your winter, summer clothes, things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, it's a great storage space. I personally didn't use it as much because it's like way taller. Mm -hmm. But my roommate did. Mm -hmm. Next question is how tall is it between the bottom and top shelf? Um, I'm tr I assume it's that. Uh, please let us know which uh, which shelf. I assume it's going to be. This. It's tall enough to hold all my books. One foot and one inch. One foot and one inch. Will you be showing what the corner room looks like? So we can't show what a corner room looks like because we have currently have a camp going on, but uh, we have toured corner rooms in the mm, past. So if mm -hmm. you look at our archive of you are home live videos, you will see us where we've toured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and anyone who's in like room one forty four specifically, I can answer all your questions about that one. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. But like those terms, just shoot me those questions and I can answer to the best of my abilities. Gotcha. So we're all up to date on questions. So does one of, do one of you all want to talk about pick one? I can. Okay. So um, if, you haven't received <laughs> 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 if you haven't received an email yet, you will soon, um, which by now you should have. But pick one is a good way, is a good opportunity for freshmen to get involved on campus. Um, so you will, we receive a big list of um, different groups that you can involve, get involved in on campus. I was involved in the UREC one, so we had one of the things that we were able to do, we were able to do a tour of the Hyper, and in that tour we did a scavenger hunt. So they had different stations put, put up 
in different locations of the hyper, in the gym, in the basketball court, um, in the racquetball room. So they were just all over, you had to fill them out, and you got your passport stamped or signed by one of the members at those desks, and, the, and you could turn it in for a chance to win like a prize. I don't remember exactly what it was. And that was like a massive Kahoot game. Yeah, there was a Kahoot game in one of the gyms. But um, there are multiple ones that you can get involved in. Off the top of my head, I remember there was a university programs one. There was um, a, if you're involved in Greek life, there was a Greek life one. Mm -hmm. um, there is, I'm gonna plug the best ones, don't worry. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> honestly, go for it, I can. All go right, so it. the best two, Seems the other best ones. two. Oh yeah? Uh, this is definitely personal opinion, but I did it, and I encourage everyone. Bleed Hawks and RIC are some of the best ways to get involved in campus, specifically dorm life. So if you're someone who's like, I live in the dorms, and like, I wanna put on an event for my dorm, and like, I don't wanna necessarily, Go through the RA to do it. You can either be an RS representative or talk to an RC representative. They basically put together bills like to fund things that make the dorm lives better. Like one thing that we did was like a flower bouquet thing. I can't like remember the exact name, but that got funneled through uh, RIC, mm -hmm. things like that. RIC is just a great way to feel like to like feel and actually make a difference on campus mm -hmm. because you are constantly doing things that are going to benefit not only dorms but campus lives. And then lead hogs is just great if you want something that's like, I don't want as much responsibility, as much like time commitment, but I do want to help out a little. Lead hogs is kind of serve as like a voice to the RIC representatives. So they get together, they plan events not only for lead hogs, but talk about events that want to get planned through RIC. I know one last year was like um, something to do with Palm Friend and them wanting to do like big bouncy house indoors. And what they had, what they did was they talked to the lead hogs, talked to the residents, and then all that got back to their representative who voted on whether or not they believe that we should do it. Seems like lots of great ways to get in, get involved on campus. Yes. Yes. I highly encourage campus involvement. I was, I was involved a lot in Lead Hogs. Um, I'm actually going to be part of the Lead More program, um, which is still falls under Lead Hogs, but it is for upperclassmen only. Um, so if you're in Lead Hogs and you're in, um, ever had like a Holcomb, in Holcomb you will see me there. If not, I will see you around the camps, or on campus when we have events like that, um, campus wide. Gotcha. So we got some more questions coming in. Can you give us the dimensions between the wall shelves and the door wall space left of the shelves? So um, I guess we can measure from like here and then also from from I here. I don't know this side though because that side has like little. Hmm. Oh, uh, because yeah. the. So measure it to the wall. Mm -hmm. Between the space. Well, they said space left of the shelves. So it should be, yeah. Okay. yeah so, so for this side, because they wanted to um, between the, they wanted to see the dimensions to the. Want me to do it to the back of here? Oh uh, yeah, do it to the back. Avoid that little little notch. Uh, or oh, so sorry, I said back. Uh, move it like right here. So from here to the wall, it's five feet eleven inches. Gotcha. Um, five feet eleven inches for that. Could you also, because they said dimensions. Well, because the height would be the same um, everywhere across the room. Okay. Where are the outlets located on the walls? Are there any behind the beds or on the window wall? So let's do some counting. Yes. So there's. So there's one here. I know that there's one yeah. behind here. There's two plugs here. Yeah. Four plugs here. There's one over here. There is a plug behind here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Four plugs here. There's like one. Okay. Yeah. I think that that's one or four. So there's three, three at least, yeah. if not four, so that's eight. Mm -hmm. There so, are none on this side. Mm -hmm. So there's about um, eight total in the room, eight plugs. Um, and two, four over here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The sink ten. over here. Gotcha. So about, about ten. Um, and so it, it looks like there's outlets on the wall by the window, um, but not on the window by the door. So your closest plug would be that's 12. right yeah, here. Two. And then um, below there as well. Okay. How tall is the space under the bed if it's fully lofted? Fully lofted. These have to, you have to turn in a fix it request if it's fully lofted. Mm -hmm. They can go up to 35 inches and their current configuration. But then go uh, Google UARC, U A R K, and fix it and tell them you want it to be lofted. 35 inches, so 35 plus 35 is 70. So mm -hmm. it should be able to go up to around 70 and every three inches between those two. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, this, I feel like this room is tall. Gibson rooms are taller than other rooms. So that way you don't have, if you yeah. do it to the top. Do you some, some of the bigger rooms up here. 
Yeah, because that way you don't hit your head, you know, if you do it to the tallest height. Did you have some residents who had it all the way yeah, up? Yeah, no, I know friends who, like, I knew people, like, entire gaming consoles under their heads. Okay. And had, like, a full game set up, so I think people had, like, as high as possible. Mm-hmm. I had a friend who actually had, like, a book, like, kind of like a bookcase staircase that actually led all the way up to her bed. It was really cool. Yeah, so you can go real high with these. Yeah, and, like, you, it's really hard to take your hands off, so you, you come up there. We have another question coming in. Measurement from the desk to the bottom shelf. Um, so I guess from this area, and just a reminder, all this is movable, but we'll do the default. So from here um, up to the wall. One foot 11 inches. One foot 11 inches. And the sink. Did we talk about the sink? That's unusual. Oh yeah, so this is one of the dorms that actually have sinks in mm-hmm. here. Uh, as well as cabinet space. Mm-hmm. So this is great because you don't have to go to the bathroom for things like brushing your teeth in the morning, night care routine. Mm-hmm. You can do the, all that in your own room, which is really great. Because yeah. I, I don't know a lot of people who are like, wish they had that accommodation. Yeah, it's it's super convenient. As someone who yeah, did not have a sink, I really wish right. I did. <laughs> Good, glad glad that it um, it's a sink, but it also works too. It's a working sink. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you need a tabletop fan here since there's a ceiling fan? What do you think, Lana? Like just a, a another oh, like fan that you could buy. Um, yeah, I have my own just because I like to be very cold when I'm asleep. So I just put like one that clip onto my bed post. But honestly, these rooms are really good about both the fan and the AC keeping the room pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So it's just personal preference. If you like you like to be bundled up, just get one because you want one, but you really don't need it. Yeah. And where is the thermostat in this room? All right, the thermostat is going to be located right here. Over here. And this thermostat is regulated by our housing facilities. So unfortunately, when you won't, in the winter when you want the room to be warmer, you won't be able to until our facilities teams comes in and raises it for the whole dorm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's one of the downfalls of this room is just not being able to control the temperature. We do have some dorms on campus, but unfortunately, this is not. Yeah, because it's all it's regulated by the by the building. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a piping system that has to mm-hmm. the whole building switches over. Because mm-hmm. yeah. these older buildings are just like that. Mm-hmm. But never gets too bad. I will say the heating kicks on fairly quickly when it like gets to the cold areas. It's more like in the summertime, yeah. like I really want it to be cold. Right. It may take a little longer to kick into the cooling system. Yeah, we, we what we do is we look at the temperature and we do our best gauge because we'll start the start the uh, conversion and it takes a couple of days. In Arkansas weather is notoriously fickle, mm-hmm. so we may have it in like uh, in the spring and maybe. You know, not the right temperature for a while, so we, anyway, we try to do our best mm-hmm. to get it going. I will say, although I'm not a big fan of Arkansas weather, it did bring one of the best memories from last year. I don't know if you participated in uh, Snowmageddon, but mm-hmm. basically it snowed for like a week straight, and when I tell you, like, people were sledding down the hills, I saw someone go down on a canoe, I saw someone go down on a stop sign, mm-hmm. um, it was just amazing, like, you see all campus coming together, just mm-hmm. really act like a bunch of kids, classes yeah. were canceled, it was I love snowmageddon. It was so much fun. Yeah. yeah, the hot staff, we actually went down. We don't recommend you do this too, but it's <laughs> <laughs> do it with caution. But over by the reed in front of the stadium, there is a huge, like, down sloping hill. We found, mm. a, we found like, an inflatable canoe that had been, um, had popped on one side. So me and a few other girls from our staff took it and we went. At this point, the snow had melted and it was purely ice. <laughs> we took the inflatable canoe and we were going downhill. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very scary. We were going too fast. We had to abort the canoe and oh. we rolled down the rest of the, the, rest you, of the way of the hill. But, but Pan- you're alive. But we're alive. Yeah. It was very fun. But pretty parents on alive. Nothing like that happened. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it, it's like sometimes that is a little scary, but it's like it was so much fun. Yeah. I cannot stress. I hope it happens again, honestly, because yeah. it was like the most fun that we had. Classes were canceled. We did hot cocoa. We had like massive snowball fights. Mm-hmm. It was. Especially in Gibson, like, because you're right there by the Dixon Hill, it was so much fun. Yeah, like, you know, it was amazing. We got some more questions coming in. Can you measure under the sink, please? So I'd say maybe we should. Uh, I guess they're just the inside of the sink. Yeah. So it's two feet four inches wide, mm-hmm. and then. I guess And then it's one foot ten inches long. And then could you get the height as well? And then two feet and two inches tall. Two feet two inches tall. It's very spacious. Next question. So just to confirm, the only outlets are under the wall shelves and by the sink. So 
There's by the sink, on the wall, by the window. Two more there. Yeah. And then on kind of this, the, uh, I guess you'd say the wall, uh, the wall on the left that has um, all the shelves. There's some outlets here and then also uh, down, down there as well. Yeah, with like the sound of clothes, you can always do extension cords. Yeah, definitely recommend bringing extension cords for whatever or room you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Smaller trips were they yeah. were clutch here. Mm-hmm. Does one switch control both the fan and the light, or is there two switches, one for each? Okay, so how it work is flip your switch, and then it's one of these. Let's see if I can go first try. I can do it. Wow, there you go. And then Perfect. You can your fan, <laughs> but mm-hmm. you can actually like turn off your light and stuff your fan mm-hmm. going. Uh, this is one of the few rooms I feel like that has a Gibson is one of the few rooms that has a fan. Yeah, uh, that's like, really nice. Too. I actually don't know if I've ever seen a, a ceiling fan in a college room. College yeah. room. But yeah. Okay. So next one is can me and my roommate have two fridges or are we limited to one? No, do you know? what you can and can't have in your room um also if you go if you look up york housing handbook you can find it in there as well um you can only have one fridge and one microwave um please do not try and sneak into we do do winter checks so if an mm-hmm. are what are where the ras will go through your room before fall closing and make sure that everything is on that is the main goal when we do that is to make sure that you have unplugged everything um no lights nothing is left on um, and if we do find a second fridge in the room, we do have to remove it and you can pick it up towards the end of the year once you move out and you can take it home. Um, we do not open any any drawers. If you have, your drawers will stay closed, your closet will stay closed. Um, if you have a little futon, we will not open that. We will just simply pull your bed out. In this case, we would pull this bed out and make sure everything is unplugged mm-hmm. and make sure that your fridge is unplugged as well. But that is the only... The only thing that we touch in the room. And no big fridges, right? Yeah, so I believe if you can check the housing portal, you can double check, but I believe it's 3.2 cubic feet Mm -hmm. um, is the size of the fridge that you can have. Um, Sometimes 3.3 or 3.4 is fine as well, just because it does not make a big difference, but anything past 4 cubic feet is not allowed. Gotcha. I will say for these rooms, like for storing fridge wise, uh, I've seen people like, Either move out this desk and put it in because it's movable and just put it under their bed, as well as just raising their bed up higher and putting fridge under there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's because it's a bigger room, you do have like the opportunity to do a lot more with the space. Yeah. Uh, Vaughn, this is a question you would be able to answer. What rooms have the window near the closet? Oh, you guys are. Oh, I testing my knowledge here. Is it? Um, I think talking about like those, like yeah, windows, these like windows, these, yeah. Those are gonna be most of the rooms in the dorms will have windows like these, and it'll either just be mm-hmm. sometimes just opposite sides. Mm-hmm. I don't believe the window placement. The only time it does change is like over corner. Rooms. Gotcha. So generally, the closet will will be by the window, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. At least on one side. Do doors stay open on their own, or would you need a door stop if you wanted to prop the door open? Um, no, your doors like can just close them. Um, they're actually, if you like want to leave them open, you don't necessarily need a door stop. I can show you what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like obviously you can close your door, but also like it'll stay open on your own. Yeah, it'll stay. Gotcha. Really open, and then it's easier. All to right. Close to. Are curtains allowed? I um, mean, I with a tension rod you can do really whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. As long as you don't nail anything into the wall or damage the wall, you, you can bring it in. Yeah, as long as these there's are, no permanent damage. These are decently, like, they're not blackout mm-hmm. curtain level, but they're pretty good. Yeah. It will definitely drown some. Uh, I was going to speak to the refrigerator issue. You were right, 3.2 cubic feet. Oh, look at that oh, hard yes. memory. I mean, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then my point ovens, one per room, not to exceed 0.7 cubic feet. Mm. So. And that's all 1.3 appliances and refrigerators in our handbook. Gotcha. That is the second time someone's memory has talked me this week. The first thing when like Henry off the top of his head was like, all right, Humphreys, these are the floors that have men, these are the women, these are split. Mm-hmm. Just all the, all the useless information <laughs> in my head. All right, we have an interesting question. Which bed is A and which one is B? This is A, that is B. Mm-hmm. But does that really it matter? It does not matter. Actually, it's not quite right. It does indeed matter. Um, be- it does, and I will explain to you why. Uh-huh. Because when you, when we come do checkouts in the fall, um, we do an expense, an 
inspection of your room before you leave and so whatever letter you have down on your housing portal is a letter is a check is a side you will check so if you say your name is billy god and you are assigned to <laughs> b and then your friend joe is assigned to a if you are if billy is assigned to b and he's sleeping on the a bed if he makes a wall a hole in the wall his friend, what was the name I said? His friend James, Lee. Is it James or Jim? <laughs> His so it does. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter when it comes to what charges are. But the beds themselves, neither one of these is A and B. Yeah. Technically, mm-hmm. convention says it's the one on the left and the one on the right. But administratively, they're not one or the other. Yeah. We we do the beds by um, left to right. So the way you read, you read from left to right. So in any room, whatever's on the left is A, and whatever's on the B. Um, the right is B. Gotcha. But it doesn't need matter. And if you do switch sides, please notify your RA so they can make a change. Um, during checkouts this past spring, we had so many issues where, especially in once you start getting to the four rooms, um, there is there's many issues when it comes to who lived on what side. So please, just to make it easier for us, notify your RA who will notify the CRE of which side you're staying on. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm going to say. It doesn't matter just because you can change it. So yeah. if you get here and you're like, I really don't want to sleep by a window, communicate with that with the RA, and then you, it's, a, it's an easy fix to do. Yeah. I didn't mean to be like, it doesn't matter at all. But yeah, yeah, that's what I was RA also implying. Yeah. Next thing is, what room are we in now? We are in 349, aren't we? Gotcha. Yes. How much space is there from the end of the bed to the closet by the window? So, end of the bed here to the closet. How do we close the closet? Yeah, from there. Three feet, not, uh, three feet, 11 inches. Three feet, 11 inches, almost four feet. Are we allowed air fryers or rice cookers? No. no. Yeah. That is included in the appliance and electronics handbook. page, yeah. handbook, part of the- Residence hall handbook. handbook. Yeah. Um, again, if you go through there, you can find a whole list of it. Um, I was just taking a screenshot of it because that is a bit, there are a lot of stuff that you think would be allowed but are actually not allowed. Um, I know one thing for sure that is very questionable are heating pads. Those are allowed. Please you just, as soon as you are done using them, unplug it, turn it off, unplug it, and put it away, but heating pads are allowed. Yeah. Be sure to check out the resident handbook by, and you can just Google UARC resident handbook. Um, it'll tell you a list of prohibited items. Generally, um, in terms of appliances, anything with like an open coil is not allowed. Yes. One point two. What not to bring? Oh, one point two. There you go. Most important page. Uh, do all closet doors have towel racks? Yes. Yep. And I can say that that is certain for everyone. Gotcha. Is there a full length mirror in the room? No, there is just this mirror that's in the room. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And again, that's problems. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hello. Where would you put a full length mirror? If um, we actually have ours. Right here. Oh, that's closet. convenient. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. I mean, personally, I would put it on the door. I mean, mm-hmm. the door works too. Yeah. If you put yeah. command strips. Command strips. What I did was I we actually had like movable dressers, so we put it on one of a. I put mine were on my dresser, and my roommate would just use it, which I was fine with. Gotcha. Can you lock the closet? There is a lock on the closet. Um, oh, interesting. But I'm not really sure if that's fully functional or not. I just don't know if it's there. Hmm. Do you, so when you when you moved in, you only had one key, right, for your room? Yeah. Oh, so you this. You could check if your room key locks yeah. it. Yeah. We don't have the room key for this room, so we don't know. Yeah. I have a feeling. I assume. I assume. Well, it probably wouldn't because then if the purpose is to divide it, yeah, then like your roommate would be able to get into your. Yeah. Yeah, so I would assume. It is a lock. <laughs> it's, the answer is technically they lock. Um, the lock but is you the probably don't have, You probably don't have the ability to lock it. It's an aesthetic lock. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're all up. Uh, all up to date on our questions, so we're gonna start winding it down. Do you all have any advice you would give to uh, freshmen, incoming students? Um, for this storm, like specifically, don't be worried to leave your dorm in that first week. Like I said, that was a great experience. First of all, you guys see how like how cool people decorated their room, mm-hmm. but also it was a great way to make friends in this dorm. As well as like we said, those one pick programs are great. A week is great. Just don't like cut yourself off. You're like, oh, I think I'm just never gonna like this. Like you know, go out and try new things. Like I tried LARPing. Thought I hated it. it. Wasn't the worst. Like trying <laughs> things like that is mm-hmm. like it's great for the college experience. Gotcha, Abby. Advice. Um, Words of wisdom. Just, just. <laughs> to go <with> my <laughs> um, 
just get involved on campus. Don't be afraid to be involved on campus. I know, it, especially if you are coming from very far away, the homesickness can really kick in. I'm gonna be honest, my homesickness didn't go away until about March. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a sophomore now, and I've been here over the summer, so my homesickness is starting to come back. But um, getting, being involved will definitely help. Definitely look into application for lead hogs are actually coming back around in August, so definitely look out for that. Personally, I think that is one of the best ways to get involved on campus. Um, the Sunday before a week, we have a Beat Hogs Field Day, and honestly, that is where I made some of the friends that I still have now. Um, I, one of my friends, me and him are working together this summer, and he was on my team, and just a little shout out, my team won the Lee Hogs <laughs> Field Day. So, wow. Um, but League Hogs, I think, is one of the best, easiest, and most funnest ways to get involved on campus. I would definitely look out for the application that's coming back in August. But um, getting involved on campus will definitely help you break down that homesickness and break down your social barriers that you have. And then my other one, which is really, really important, is make sure to take time to yourself. I know you get caught up in studying. If you get a job on campus, you can become um, you can just get swallowed up in your job and your work. So make sure to separate a time of the day just for you. Go out for a walk, sit at the Greek theater, go to Starbucks and then go to the Greek theater. It's, it's, the Greek theater. it's, <laughs> it's amazing. It's yeah. so easy to just, it's so easy to step away and get involved. Um, I know so many people that have gotten sick from the stress and not being able to take time for themselves. If you ever need help, reach out to your wellness RA. They are, they are, educated for that specifically you can reach out to your ra i have an open door policy with my residents and they are more than welcome to come into my room whenever just not to make sure i'm there but just don't be afraid to push yourself first because now that you are in this environment that is one of the most important and um it's just one of the most important things that you can do for yourself yeah, sure. and uh, just for my first gen students just because like i was a first gen student myself I will say that it's definitely a bit of a scare because a lot of students are like, well, I can talk to like sister, brother, I can talk to like an aunt or an uncle or like a parent about this. And not everyone has that. So coming to college is a little scary. But I will say there are plenty of resources out there for our first generation students to figure things out, figure things out like just from like financial aid standpoints or just finding like someone to talk to because it is a different struggle when you don't have that person like you can be like, hey, how do I do this college thing? Mm -hmm. um, so for my first-time students, it is scary, but there are those resources for you, and you should always look at them because they help a lot, trust me. So it's the MC. Shout out to the Multicultural Center. Yes, mm -hmm. that is it a is great place to mm -hmm. go. The Multicultural Center is yeah. amazing. Can't recommend it enough. Yes. If you have, if you have um, this is the only scholarship I know that does it, but um, I know the engineering college, you will have mentors, as well as the Arkansas Bridge Scholarship through the Multicultural Center. That one as well does mentors. Reach out to your mentors. Mentors, they are educated in that as well. Um, any mentors, any RAs, we all know the information that is on campus for any homesickness, for any, um, if you want to get involved more in diversity, if you want to discover your culture more, anything at all, reach out to those mentors and to those RAs and they can help you find out what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw a name out there because they were honestly a big help for me. They're my first perspective teachers. Professor Jessica Sheets is like mm -hmm. the absolute queen. She always has those contacts with people. So if you have a class with Jessica Sheets, literally just talk to her. She is absolutely amazing. I know some of the peer mentors that's coming in under her who literally just applied to the job to work with her. She's a great contact. Um, I was just highly stressed, especially in classes with her. She's a university perspective teacher. Just use that. She actually is a university uh, perspective teacher for first gen people. So Jessica Sheets is like my go to contact if I need help with anything. Like, she's a great resource. Awesome. As well as, again, the Multicultural Center. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much for the great advice. We had one last question. How do we get our, lo our beds lofted before we move in? You are going. <laughs> you, um, you can look up You Work Fix It. And you click on the first link that pops up, and then there will be a, grid, a big green box that says link to UARC Fix It. You click on that, it will take you to a Google form. You can fill that out with your room number. You will put exactly what you want, how high you want your bed lofted. You can put your phone number so they can call you if, you have, if they have any questions or anything like that. And then by the time you move in, it should be lofted. I believe there is a deadline. Yes, they want to be first. first. We found that out yesterday. So yeah. in four days, you have to get the request yeah. in. And there are a lot. 
So I would suggest doing it soon so our team can get on that. You definitely can get on it. Um, if you want to, you can definitely get a soft mallet. You or a friend can come do it just because other people are like, I'll just do it when I get there. So if you're one of those. These will be 135 yeah. inches though, mm -hmm. unless you get that other piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all so much for giving us this tour, and yeah, y'all can sign us out. Yeah. All right. Uh, this was Alana and Abigail for the Gibson tour, and hope to see you guys soon in the fall. Awesome. Thank y'all.